All right, uh, me and Joel are back, and um, no video, that was Joel's idea. Um, what we're going to be doing is uh, counting down and discussing each of our top five uh, favourite albums of all time. Um, a lot of this is because we have like very, very different tastes in music. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's an attempt to broaden both our horizons, because uh, after we've done this, uh, when we get a chance to do a second part, we're going to go away and listen to each other's top fives. And then uh, come back and do like review and uh, a discussion on them together. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, I don't think we've listened to each other's top five before. I don't. I, well, we'll see when we get round to it. But yeah. I, I'm, I think um, I think maybe one of yours I've listened to, but everything else. Mm. But uh, you want to start? Yeah. Yeah, I'll start. Um, number five is "Goodbye and Good Riddance" by Juice World. Uh, Juice World is one of my favorite musicians at the moment. I just sort of love everything he's doing. Um. Goodbye and Good Runes was first proper album. Uh, second one, Death, Death Race for Love, I also really enjoyed, but I feel like Goodbye is such a much more complete package. Like, um, I think you would have heard probably Lucid Dreams. Yeah, I've heard Lucid Dreams and uh, Hyde was on the uh, Spider-Verse soundtrack. Yeah. But is that on the album? Or? No, that's not on the album. Okay. Yeah, I've heard Lucid Dreams and I've, it's, it's a good song. So. Yeah, just that took over the charts, but I think he's so people don't appreciate the rest of his music enough because how much that got big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, oh, well, one number five, uh, more of a classic, uh, London Calling by The Clash. Um, simply just one of the best punk rock albums ever. Um, one of the most influential albums ever, one of the most iconic images in all of music. Uh, you know, the smashing the guitar on stage on the album cover. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, when it comes to British music, you know, The Clash... Uh, like one names that really do jump to mind first, alongside like Queen and the Beatles, Elton John, the Clash really are up there, and I think it's just track to track, track to track, uh, an almost perfect album. You know, you've got London Calling, uh, Spanish Bombs, Really Can't Fail, Brand New Cadillac, uh, Hateful, as Jimmy Jazz. There's so many great songs on this album, and uh, it just it's a, always a great listen. I've got the vinyl, and uh, I listen to it pretty often. It's just a brilliant album. And I know you do like more modern punk stuff. Oh, I do appreciate um, the earliest as well, because that sort of built the path for the punk that I listen to now. Yeah, and I do think like, it's London Calling is like an essential album. I think. So, yeah. I've I t I feel like when I listen to it, there will be songs I recognise. Yeah, yeah. Because I know I've listened to like the Clash songs, just you know, because it, it's huge, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> your number four? My number four is Logic, everybody. Uh, this one I have listened to. This is the only one I don't own on vinyl, but I just love it. I think Logic is one of the best rappers going at the moment. Like, I think he's up there with like Eminem for like best rapper, just bar for bar rapper. And the message in everybody as well is brilliant, you know. If, Everyone's brilliant. Everyone's beautiful in their own way. Um, the one eight hundred song as well. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I I, I listened to this one. It is a really good album. Like I, I will listen to it again, like for this. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do really like it. Black Spider Man, one eight hundred. Yes. So it's it some really good songs on there. Like I said, um, Logic. Uh, what he's doing with his music, the messages he's trying to send. I do I do really appreciate that. I've got. Stuff. Isn't it Neil deGrasse Tyson as God as well? No, that was on um, Incredible Journey, I think it was called. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. I know there's God in this as well. What's... Oh, yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, you are right. You are yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, my number four is uh, Worlds by uh, Porter Robinson. Um, I found uh, as good as Porter Robinson uh, through Undertale. There was a fan made music video um, for the song uh, Goodbye to a World. And uh, that song just hooked me, and uh, I tracked down the album, listened to it, and um, like you know what I'm like. I don't usually go for electronic music as much, yeah. but Paul Robinson, what he does with it is just really fucking unique, and I don't think there's anyone quite like him. It's very um, almost uh, ambient in places, but it's got some very driving beats as well there's some really good lyrics and what he does with uh vocals as well 
Um, I just think it's a really stellar uh, album, like for electronic genre. And again, the songs on there, like uh, Years of War, uh, uh, Sad Machine, Divinity, uh, Hear the Bells. Uh, again, it's just, again, track for track, uh, a brilliant album. I think it's a bad track on here. Um, and Shelter, it, well, Shelter isn't on the album, it's, uh, it was released as a single, but that's one of my favourite songs. Um, yeah, like, it, it, I think the reason I love that so much is because it's something I don't usually go for. Yeah. Like, I do, I do obviously love stuff like uh, Daft Punk and Apology, but I, that's kind of, like, a given. Like, I've never though, gone deep in electronic genre, and Port Robinson is just something that really clicked for me. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Cool. I reckon you'd enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, that's something I'll be into. So if I probably tune into it. Uh, my number three. Yep. Yeah. Is um, Shred Out Compton by NWA. It's like I'm the whitest person I know, but it's so good. Like, in my opinion, if it was something for this album, rap wouldn't be anything like it is today. They're one of the most important groups in music history. Um. And also the songs is brilliant. Like they have s- such a message. Like whereas Logic is going, everyone should accept us. NWA is going, you're going to accept us, or like we're really hard because it's NWA. In it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've, obviously I love the NWA, but I've never listened to Straight Outta Compton properly. Like I've listened to like Wait Hits album, and of course watched the movie. Yeah, one of my favorite films of all time. Yeah. Um, I know, like, uh, a lot of my famous tracks are on there, Australia Compton, uh, Gangster Gangster, and... Don't mind, fuck uh, the police. Fuck the police, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's one I'm looking forward to listening to for you. Yeah, it's brilliant. You love it. <laughs> uh, my number three, um, Abbey Road by The Beatles. Um, yeah, it was really hard to pick a favourite Beatles album, because everything from Sgt Pepper onwards is pretty much perfect. Um... So it was really hard for me to decide between uh, Sgt. Pepper, The White Album, and Abbey Road in particular. I do love Let It Be, but it's not quite as uh, complete as the others. Like Even though Across the Universe is my favorite Beatles song, it's on that album. But again, Abbey Road, I think, was the Beatles really at the height of um, just that, that niche where they really hit their perfection, I think. Like... Again, Sgt. Pepper, White Album, they are both um, incredible albums and worth listening to. But Abbey Road, I think, just had the best group of songs that fit best together. You know, you've got Maxwell's Silver Hammer, Come Together, Something, Here Comes the Sun, Octopus's Garden. Um, it's the album that most felt like it ran together cohesively, rather this... than being a collection of songs, <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah, this will be the album that I know the most of. Yeah, like, like we, 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 we've we grown up on the Beatles. Yeah, because so. our moms are insane. <laughs> and they're, they're like, whatever would be one of my favourites. Yeah. Uh, yeah, again, it, it was really hard to pick. Uh, actually, it was really hard to pick all my top three, uh, just picking the one album for each group. But uh, yeah, I think Abbey Road for the Beatles. Uh, my number two is Little Peep Come Over You So Part One. Obviously. Like, there's a lot of things around him, Peep. Either his passing, like, how he... People thought he glorified drug abuse, but he just didn't really. That's a different topic. Um, It's just brilliant. It's emo rap in the best possible way. It's so real and so raw, and, like, it doesn't feel like... This is, like, after he sort of blew up after, like, um, Ben's truck and... Awful thing, that's it. Sort of blew up. But he he didn't it didn't change. Like if you listen to his earlier stuff on SoundCloud, it sounds just like that, just Peep's grow he's grew as an artist. So I just feel like it's Peep at his best. I love Come Open Your Side Part Two as well. But I think one was just more raw and what he wanted. Yeah, like I said, again I've listened to awful things. Uh yeah. I did like it. I think it is a like a really interesting sound, and you've gone on about Pete for the longest time. Yeah, <laughs> I sort of listened to him before he passed. Like I listened to a few of his songs and saw a lot of him, but then after he passed, I was like, oh, I'll go back. I listened to his stuff, and since I've been like 
obsessed. Oh, Five year musician. Yeah. Uh, number two for me, uh, Slipknot's uh, self titled debut album. Uh, again, it was really hard for me to choose between uh, Slipknot and Iowa. Uh, their first two albums are both brutal and brilliant for it, but I think I prefer the first one because uh, more of my favorite songs are on there. And it's, prob- it's probably, I think it's, it's a shout for the best debut album ever because. In terms of just being a pure statement of intent for what this band, who they are, what they're doing, Slipknot is, it perfectly embodies them. Uh, their, their visceral rage and, uh, you know, the mixture of Corey with his screaming and the harsh and the more melodic singing, yeah. uh, the layered instrument work, having three percussionists and all the different band members, uh, it was an ast- it's such an astounding album, and uh, again, a perfect in- way for Slipknot to announce themselves to the world. You've got Wait and Bleed, Spit It Out, Surfacing, Eyeless, Eeyore, uh, Purity, uh, so many fucking amazing songs, Sick as well. Uh, again, Iowa was uh, argu- a-, a lot heavier than the first album, if you believe it, but... I think it was just that statement, that raw, like, burst onto the scene that they had. Um, I, very few bands, I think, have come close to being as uh, impactful as that with their debut. Yeah, I've not really listened to Amish Slipknot, apart from the songs that like used to be on the TV, and we used to watch, like, Kerrang! and stuff. <laughs> Jeez, but like, um, like, their masks used to terrify me. But I've sort of grown to love their image, like, I... I know their music is heavy and everything, not really listen to it, but I just like the like, looking at the band, like the poster you've got, I just like staring at that because it's just really cool. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> that was from uh, the uh, the Grey Chapter tour. Yeah. And um, what is your uh, number one, your favourite album ever? My favourite album ever is Seventeen by XXX Tentacion. Um, it's actually a poster of X behind Nathan there. Oh. They're, yeah, the lamp doesn't help. Yeah, <laughs> he's just, it's just brilliant. Like it's kind of hard to talk about it, but the fact that he only had like one feature and how many of the pretty much all of the songs of hit blew up, like Jocelyn Flor- Flores, I pronounced that right, and um, that took over the chart. That's what made X mainstream. Like look at me, sort of blew him up, but. I feel like this album is the thing that brought him to like the status he was at when he passed. Like, he's just, you know, the songs on it, yeah, everyone dies in nightmares. It's so personal to him as well. Like, the biggest song on it is about his friend's suicide. And you could tell how much he really cares about what everything he did on that album. And like, I know he had his controversies and everything in his personal life, but. I feel like that is just such a perfect album. Like, that's the best album of the new wave of hip hop, in my opinion. Because I just feel like it's just so perfect. Like, that's hard to say. Yeah, I, I remember I, I I'd never listened to X, and I remember passing the news on to you that he died. Yeah, because yeah. I saw it and I thought it, I was like TMZ reported it and everything. I was like, oh. I don't know, I'm not going to trust it. And then you told me and I sat down for like two hours straight listening to pretty much everything he ever released. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember you saying like he's pretty different like in terms of like how he mixes in a lot of harder stuff with... Yeah. Hip-hop, like like more metal riffs and... Yeah. Like like that. Revenge. Was it Revenge? Yes, his latest one. That's a heavy metal album. It's basically just a rock album. It's mm. great. Kanye West is on it. Yeah, well, I, I always appreciate when people, like, do something different. Yeah. It's why, it's why I love bands like Tool and Dream Theater so much, because I wish I had something new with every album. Yeah, like, I'd say Seventeen is the most raw of him. And then, like, Question Mark was more of the mainstream hip hoppy stuff. And then, uh, Revenge was the rock stuff, but I'd say Seventeen is the most raw X. Yeah, okay. Uh, and my number one... Uh, the Downward Spiral by Nine Inch Nails. Uh, Nine Inch Nails, uh, friend of ours, Bunny, put it best. Um, they are what depression and anxiety would sound like. 
Um, yeah, Nine Inch Nails are my favourite group as well. Uh, because they hit that nerve of like being very so raw and uh, uh, depressing, for lack of a better word, but in a comforting way. Uh, Downward Spiral, I think, is the best album uh, to <clears throat> exemplify that. Like, you've got songs like Closer and uh, Hurt, which sound like very, uh, very painful uh, in a lot of places. Oh, and you're like, um, come over and sober them, because I feel like that's how Pete portrays himself as well. Like, very sad. Fair enough. Uh, but again, like Downward Spiral, uh, it's so raw, it has that trademark. Uh, distortion and kind of like uneasy sound that Nine Inch Nails have. They're another group that do try something different with every album. Trent Reznor is always pushing himself to be creative, but he always retains like their like unmistakable identity. And I just feel like Downward Spiral, um, it was their second like proper album, and it really solidified their identity. I think. And more than that, it's just the song, the album that sticks with me personally for the sound and the lyrics and how harsh and yet soft it can be. It's a very, uh, it's a roller coaster of an album, let's put it that way. Um, it's, it's brilliant and uh, Nine Inch Nails, again, they're my favourite group. I went to see them a couple of years ago when they were fucking amazing. Uh, so yeah, that was part of my favourite. No, yeah, I look forward to listening to all of yours. Yeah, well, same. It'll be interesting. Um, be very diff. We've had very different uh, albums. <laughs> I think it's more like the age thing as well. Like, uh, you're yeah, bit, yeah. But like, there's a lot of different things because obviously all of mine are very new, apart from NWO. Yeah, but there was more like older stuff, like, not like even old, but like eight oh eight. One of the Kid Cudi albums, I can't think of that. It was very close to making the list. Yeah, like for me, some honorable mentions, uh, Lateralis by Tool, uh, Night of the Opera by Queen, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie. Yeah. Those are some honorable uh, mentions for me. Uh, I had a long list of stuff that... Uh, well, I've got my short list here, and like you can see how many I had down. Uh, yeah, this was a tough list to make. I was going through my Spotify, like, I love you, I love that, I love that, I love that. And just to get to one per artist, I think, was probably a good call, especially in my case, otherwise this list probably would have just been, like, Slipknot and the Beatles. Yeah, to be fair, I think it would have been, like, <laughs> X and Peep. But yeah, um, what we're going to do, we'll go away and we'll listen, yeah. uh, when we've listened to all of them, we'll come back and uh, offer our thoughts on each other's yeah. favourites, yeah. Uh I'll leave my Twitter and Joel's Instagram yeah. uh, in the description. Like, yeah, subscribe to PJ as always. And uh, we will see you next time when we get around to doing our reviews. Yeah. <laughs>